Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Rockwell. I recently sat down with Dr. Kenneth Wells to talk about his debut opera, The First Lady. Dr. Wells is a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at UCLA's David Geffen School of Medicine. With an MD from UC San Francisco and his master's in public health from UCLA, Dr. Wells is also a senior scientist at RAND, a professor of health policy and management at the UCLA Fielding School of Public Health, and is the co-director of the Robert Wood Johnson Clinical Scholars Program. He also happens to be a gifted musician. Ten years ago, Dr. Wells began composing his first opera. It was performed in February 2010. I was curious about the events that led him to compose this opera. Tell us a little bit about your background. You come from a musical family. I do. Well, I come from a family of professionals in other fields who were very active amateur musicians. So, for example, my grandfather was a vice president of Bell Telephone and the choir director for Amy Semple McPherson um, in the Angelus Temple downtown. And his, uh, the woman he married, um, who, who he grew up with, uh, was their soprano soloist. Um, my grandmother was a practical nurse on my mother's side, but she also was an amateur pianist. And uh, so people in my family sort of always were doing two things. Uh, my father's brother also was a, a, a wonderful uh, pianist and painter, but, uh, but an engineer like my father was. Were there other physicians in your family? My, my, my grandfather's oldest sister, uh, Ruth, was the first woman thoracic surgeon in the United States, uh, trained at Stanford uh, Medical School. Um, I believe she was only the second woman to graduate from Stanford Medical School. Um, and then my grandfather's youngest uh, brother, uh, Philip, was a psychiatrist, um, uh, also graduated from Stanford. And his son, John, is a psychiatrist who also lives here in the Los Angeles area. So how did you choose your career picking between music and medicine? It was not an easy decision. I, um, you know, I loved music since I was a little kid, and um, in my family, whenever there was a holiday, let's say Christmas, we would travel, you know, we would walk around the neighborhood singing in 16-part harmony, and our problem was no one could ever decide who would agree to sing the melody, because everyone wanted to harmonize. Um, and, uh, but my mother decided uh, literally the day I was born that I was going to be a doctor and I was raised with that expectation and I was happy with that. I had influential doctors. My family doctor took me back to his medical school when I was I think 11 years old. Um, uh, I, when I had uh, in junior high school I had an appendectomy and um, the, it was actually performed by a cardiologist because it was an emergency and he brought a model of the heart to me in my hospital room, which is how I spent my time recovering, kind of studying the heart. So I, I thought I was, yeah, well, I, I was planning on becoming a doctor, but I loved music. And then in college, when I got more seriously into music, then I sort of felt, what am I going to do with my life? And uh, my parents, as many parents do, you know, agonized a bit over my indecision. Uh, eventually told me I could do whatever I wanted, but I knew they didn't really mean that. <laughs> and um, I went to medical school uh, at UCSF, and um, all through college, uh, sang in the glee clubs, did composing on the side. I've composed since I was about 12 years old, and uh, told myself I had to give up music when I went to medical school. So I went to San Francisco, left my family, and uh, you know, tried to be the good young medical student, and decided after nine months I'd had it that I would do medical school, but I would never not do music again the rest of my life. So I started recomposing. I wrote little songs that I sent to my brother, whom I missed very much, and to his wife. We, we used to go around singing in churches as a trio together. So I kept writing 
uh, music for them. Uh, I wrote music for my local church group during medical school. I was a soloist with a San Francisco Bach choir as a tenor, a substitute organist at my church, and I just never looked back. So we've got you to medical school, and you're doing music. Did you have conflicts often in your medical career with your musical career? Not too much once I decided that I was simply going to be doing music anyway. That helped a lot, making that decision. I think I did go through, when I, after my research training at UCLA and my psychiatry um, training, I, I did go through a period again where I really felt I should be an orchestra conductor or be composing. I, I spent some of my time uh, prior to making tenure um, studying with May Lee Maida with the uh, American Youth Symphony Orchestra here in Los Angeles. I, when I say studying, I would go to his rehearsals and we would talk and it was more informal than studying. Um, I was uh, I started as a as a uh, fellow after my residency in psychiatry. I started my own singing group here in LA. I've had a chorus basically since I was fourteen that I directed, um, and I I did feel that pull. Um, what happened was uh, when I was up for tenure at UCLA, there was a five year period where none of my colleagues made tenure between uh, now the vice chairman and myself. And I decided that wasn't going to happen to me. So I didn't give up music, but I said, get over this kind of torturing yourself and get your work done, make your tenure, which I did. And um, I made a decision at that time that I would handle this conflict by putting the creativity that I put into my music into my work. You know, I challenged myself to make my work as creative as possible so that I wouldn't miss spending my time doing creative things. And I did that, I think, to, to some degree. I think that, um, I think people generally recognize the kind of work that I do in my research as being pretty creative. And I, I think it really benefited uh, the work that I do. Thank you.